be your host today. Have you worried about your uh, branding story? Have you had a hard time struggling with that? Who is the hero of your story? Well, you are in the right place because that's what we're going to talk about today. I am so excited. I have so many amazing um, co-hosts with me today. And of course, all of you on the couch, remember, we love getting your comments. Throw your comments in the comment section and you can join the conversation. We will show them up here on the screen and you will be part of the conversation. So let's meet our co-host. Oh, we're going to talk to Bob first. Bob Taylor. <laughs> Bob, I have a question for you. Let's get to know you. How has having a brand story helped you on your entrepreneurial journey? Well, you asked me to introduce myself first, right? So I'm I'm Bob Taylor. I'm a copywriter based here in the in the UK, um, specifically conversion copy, which I'll get onto later when we when we go into discussion on some stuff. But um, can you repeat the question? Sorry, I've just gone blank. I absolutely can. <laughs> How has having a brand story helped you on your entrepreneurial journey? Knowing your brand story, how has that helped you? So, for the for, for knowing your brand story is is really important um, for me as as a copywriter. It's all about converting customers into into paying into buyers. Um, so, knowing a brand story means knowing how to get that customer into your brand story so that they buy into whatever you're selling and whether it be for for my entrepreneurial journey myself or for for the clients that I work with um so really bringing them into my story which I'm sure we're going to touch on more later with with some of the other questions you ask um but that's that's why it's just so important to have a brand story um one of the books that I always recommend when I talk about this sort of thing is the Simon Sinek's Start With Why um, which I've read multiple times, but starting with why is really important. And that actually helps to identify your brand story as you know why you do what you do. That's great. That is awesome. Bonnie, I'm going to bring you up and I'm going to ask you the exact same question. How has, how has having a brand story helped you on your entrepreneurial journey? And welcome to the show also. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I help people with creating content. Uh, I used to be a content writer uh, and now I coach people on how to do that. So my brand story kind of evolved from, you know, being in the corporate world to then becoming an entrepreneur uh, and then doing the writing for people to now coaching them on how to do it. So my story really evolves about around being in the trenches. Uh, you know, I've, I've done this work, I've rolled up my sleeves, and that's really meant to get people to relate to me. So anything that I'm putting out uh, in my world is going to resonate um, with people that want to, to be in my community. So I think my my evolution, my story evolution, um, people can relate to. Very good. Very cool. So Andrea. Hi, Peggy. You no, know, it's always dangerous when you and I are on the same show because um, we just bounce off of each other so well. Sure. So here you go. How has having a brand story helped you in your entrepreneurial journey? Hi, everyone. Well, uh, my name is Andrew Gortz. And uh, you see there it says I'm a Thrive Strategist. And, you know, having a brand story really helps you share what people, what you do to people, just sort of like the illustrious Bob and Bonnie, the B&B &B team just mentioned. Um, and I know, I guess, personally, sharing your journey, either entrepreneurially or personally, like Bonnie says, really draws people in. And as somebody who branding is like, it's like, did Monica plot at this to put me on this show with these two people today um, to, to talk about branding? Because I have struggled in my own entrepreneurial journey with the branding because it's all about, you know, what aspects of my story do I share? What do I keep 
what are mine? Like, what do I put out there? And I think for uh, people who do the work that I do, like I do transformational work with people in their mind, their body, and their spirit and sort of harmonize all those things so that they can live a full life. And as I'm putting this out into the world, it occurs to me that sharing my story helps illustrate the fact that I can be your guide. Duh. So, uh, <laughs> so, you know, having a brand story or being really conscious of what makes you like the people you want to help uh, is very important in terms of your, your economic, I guess, uh, reward <laughs> when you are putting yourself out there to help change lives, you know? So when I reframed it, it really helped me be expository, so to speak, about why I'm so passionate about people thriving. I love that. I love that. So I'm going to, I'm going to, of course, build on something that, that you mentioned. Um, you know, I have a different story than, than most entrepreneurs. I did not come from corporate or business. I have always been an entrepreneur. I've always been a business owner. My parents were business owners. My grandparents were business owners. Like none, no one in anywhere close to, you know, my family ever came from corporate or the business, you know, side like that. So I was raised and, and everyone knows I, I give Ron Stoffer quotes. That's my dad. Um, but this is a place where I feel that Ron Stoffer led me wrong. He, he, he missed it here out of all the amazing advice he gave me. Um, when I was a kid growing up, um, it was always your Ron Stoffer's daughter. You can't do that. You can't go out and do stupid teenage stuff. You can't go out like, because mm -hmm. you represent this business. Everything you do represents the, the, the family. And so I was really raised at, you know, you can have an opinion, just don't share it with anyone. You can have your own views, just don't share it with anyone. And what I came to find out a few years ago is that's, that's actually hurting me more. And especially nowadays, people want to know what I believe in because that's going to attract like-minded people. And you know what? Let's be honest. It'll repel people that don't agree with me. And that's okay because... I don't want to work with them anyway. Right. So knowing my story and sharing my story of who I am, what I believe in, what I stand for, what my values are, you know, really, really helps people connect with you. And so I think that that's um, something that we all need to really be aware of. All right, guys, you ready to get motivated? Let's start with Bonnie and let's get motivated. Oh, oh, we have a comment from our, uh, you, uh, from a Facebook viewer. What is your why exactly? That's, that's how we build our story. What, what is our why? A brand, a, a my brand story is my calling card. Absolutely. That's from Monica, our leader. <laughs> All right. All right. Bonnie, you're up. Why is it important to identify the hero that sets the tone for your brand story? How do you identify the hero of your story? And how does that help set the tone? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I think your brand story is meant to relate to whoever it is you're serving. So I think Bob mentioned that earlier. Who who do you want to serve? And um, to Andrea's point, there has to be some kind of transformation. I mean, if you think about, you know, people searching online, they typically have a question and they're looking for an answer or they've got a problem and they need a solution. So you set yourself up, you know, you position yourself to be the person that can help them in that situation. So in some instances, you become that brand hero, but by supporting them, you're helping them become the hero in their own story because now they're getting the answers that they need in order to get to the transformation. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Andrea, same question. Um, Was it a why or a how? Why? Well, I know you love why questions. <laughs> why is it important to identify the hero when setting the tone for your brand story? Uh, I couldn't agree with Bonnie more. Um, I, Love the book recommendation that um, Bob said earlier about um, finding your why, because, yeah, that motivates 
everything that we do. But then Bonnie's comment made me think about uh, Donald Miller's new book. Like, you know, when you, uh, Donald Miller talks all about branding and like he has, you know, story brand and all these great books. His latest one is all about the hero of the story. And he further dissects like how come, uh, you know, having the hero in the story and the hero prevailing and all these cool things. And I was like, uh, duh. And so people are always looking for, um, well, they're not always looking, but they are looking for solutions to their problems, right? Like we are all sitting here as solution providers. I like to tell people all the time, if you're in business, you provide solutions and people want to be the hero of their own story. So to Bonnie's point, helping someone paint the picture, like that person guided the hero with the struggle to a transformation makes you very appealing. And so uh, being able to paint that really well for people is hugely important as the entrepreneur, because I think so often we as entrepreneurs talk at people, but if we can talk into what they're experiencing and things like that, it makes you more attractive as the guide that's going to help them on the transformation, therefore making them the hero. Uh, it's been transformational for me to really understand that and to pivot the telling of the brand story, the telling of the hero's journey. And so I think it's really, really important to know who the hero is and the transformation that they're going to be having because you, the solution provider, were the guide. So that's my two cents on that. I love it. I love it. All right, Bob, why is it important to identify the hero when setting the tone of, up for your brand story? Well, there's not much more I can do than piggyback on what Andrew and Bonnie have said. Um, it, too many times I see businesses or, or, or people using, um, making themselves the hero in their brand story and making themselves the guide as well. And obviously we can, we can, we can see how that doesn't work and that doesn't, how that doesn't fit in, but you can see it most apparently on business uh, websites. If you go to their about page, if you look at the about page, is it about the customer or you know, the person you're serving or is it about you? Because an about page should be about you. When you when you find your why, you also, as you were talking about earlier, Peggy, you also discover your ideal client, who, who your ideal client is on the back of that why. Um, so you need to identify the hero in your brand story and in all of your marketing that you put out there as well, being the customer. And then as Andrea just said, showing yourself very clearly how you can guide them through their problem in the story um, to, to get the solution that they're looking for. So just really piggybacking on what the other two said, but maybe there's a bit more information there. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I knew this was going to be a good show when I, when I saw who was going to be on. I, this is exciting. So I, I want to mention something that the other three haven't um, already covered thoroughly. <laughs> Um, and that is the tone. Like, I, I feel like um, it's important that we know who the hero of our story is. Are we the hero of our story? Are our clients the hero of our story? Um, is our, you know, what is it that, that's actually the hero, the story? But, but what tone does that set? Um, and I think, I think um, when Bob said, like the about page should be about you and, you know, and how you relate to your clients. I think that's setting the tone. Like um, there's different ways because I'm, I'm here with two, two great writers, but I know there's different ways to present that story. Do you want to present it in the tone of it's all about me or in the tone that I'm here to help you and it's really all about you. So I think that, that it's really in how we frame that and how we, we, we really see what our job is and what our client's job is. And uh, I think that's, to me, that's what I got out of this question. All right, guys, let's keep going. Let's stay inspired. All right. So Andrea, you are, you are on the hot seat first now. How does a lack of understanding of the importance of your brand story affect the way we brand our business? Like if we don't understand it, how, how is that going to affect our branding? Well, I think it was good that 
I got this question first since I'm surrounded by two branding people and probably the one who struggled the most with figuring out the brand story or understanding the importance of the brand story and the telling of it. Like I love Bob. That was like the biggest mic drop about the about section. I was like, Oh yes. Okay. Let me go back and relook about my about section. So thank you. Uh, you know, your brand story to Peggy's point is all about who you're going to bring into this world and send them on their way. And when it's too big or you're, cause especially as a health and wellness person, we can always be like, I help with this. I help with that. And really it's important to be that niche down person or be able to really specify how you help, especially here in North America, because there's so many of us health coaches, health strategists, whatever we're doing. And, and it's hard to differentiate yourself. So it's really important, like Bob and Bonnie have both said, to really cleverly uh, and accurately paint how you as the guide can help and then, you know, what kind of stories, because they're, I guess, you know, you were there first and that's why you're the guide. <laughs> so uh, how you helped yourself and then therefore can help the other people. So importance of this brand story has been huge and it's been huge in my evolution as a business owner, really understanding that and being able to articulate, I like to say, as Peggy would say too, from a place of sincere authenticity authenticity that it is um, why you're passionate about what you do. So um, I'm honored to be here with these two smart people are going to talk next <laughs> because I'm like, Oh, let me get out my, my truth, truth and telling story. Right. Like it wasn't good till I figured it out. Right. And was able to really talk about it. So now you, but, but that's are, literally the question now. is how, how is the lack of understanding? So yeah. you're, you're the star of this, right? Yeah, I'm you, the star you, of you have framed yourself as the star of the story. Exactly. And I had able guides. I surrounded myself. Oh, that's the next question. But anyway, that's the next know. question. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, how is the lack of understanding of the importance of your branding story affect um, the way we brand our business? Um, so actually, I want to touch on a couple of points. First of all, Andrea, the first thing you can do to make your about page about the customer is use the word you in the, in the first headline. Just a little bit of a hint there. Use the word you in the, in the, in the first headline on your about page. But to, to answer this question, I do want to put your mind at ease as well, Andrea, that you're not the only one. When I, uh, my story is that I, I did come from the corporate world. I was set up of working in insurance, which I did sales for 10 years. Um, I just didn't want to do that anymore because I didn't really feel like I was helping people, which is my why. Um, very common why, but <laughs> it is it is my why. It's helping people find solutions to their problems. Um, it's why I find copywriting so fascinating. Um, but for the first few months when I just launched myself into be being an entrepreneur, never done it before, because I was helping other people write their brand stories through through copywriting, I didn't think I needed my own. It was wrong, of course. I, of course I needed my own. And here's a, here's a truth bomb as well. I didn't get one customer in the first three months of me, me being an entrepreneur, not one. No matter how hard I tried, no matter what I wrote, I didn't convert one, one lead that I got through until I, decided, until I read Start With Why by Simon Sinek and actually found my why. And all of that led into understanding that I had a brand story, led to me rewriting my about page, refocusing my home page. Now, when I sent people to my, my website to look at what I do, they could understand, they could connect with me. They could relate to what I offer in, 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 this, in the process that they're in at the moment, whatever they want to do. In my case, it's getting more sales. I'm a conversion copywriter, so it's getting more sales of whatever product or service you offer. But me writing that way and communicating my brand story in that way helped me get more customers. So the, 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 it's important to get it right and to have a brand story because without it, we don't have customers or we don't have the right customers, which is also something else that affected me at the beginning, but let's not get into that too much. <laughs> exactly, that is awesome. Okay, Bonnie, <laughs> sorry, you're, you're, you've got to follow all of this, but I know you've got this handled. How does a lack of understanding of the importance of your brand story affect the way we brand our business? I think from a, um, an early um, 
early startup business. Well, not even just early. Um, so many people uh, think they can serve everybody. Uh, and I think everybody here knows that you need to niche down because um, you're not going to be able to touch everybody. You need to find that that community or tribe that that resonates with with your why um, and why you do things and how it's like, OK, yeah, that's me, too. Th that's that's how um, you're going to attract more people, the law of attraction or however you want to call it. So if you don't have that brand story that shows people your values um, and how you show up in the world, then nobody is going to want to talk to you. Uh, so I think that's and and it's an evolution. Your brand story just doesn't happen. Um, it comes over time. I mean, I've been through many iterations of, of my business and and feel confident now that I have a brand story. But you know, ten years ago, I don't th really think that I did. So it's it, your story. Like we hear, you know, every day is a new chapter in your life. Um, and so similar with your brand story, I think. I love that. I love that. And I. I shared earlier, you know, for me, I was a chameleon for many years. So just fit in, just don't, don't offend anyone, appeal to everyone. Um, don't ever let, you know, anybody have anything to disagree with you about. And, and that wasn't authentic. Um, that wasn't real. And um, something that I, I do in my headshot strategy program, and, and I want to share it really quick and that is, I explained to you that the more specific you are, the more broad you actually reach. And it's contour to, you know, you you think that, oh, if I don't have a story, if I just fit in everywhere, then I can reach everybody. But that's not true. Um, it's when you get very specific that people say, oh, I can see what you do here. She's so good at this. I wonder if she can also do that. And, and then they're curious and they want to go to your website. They want to make that call with you. They want to figure out what all that you do. And, um, you know, that's literally um, what we do with, you know, headshots is get really narrow down, have that headshot really convey a specific emotion, a specific thing so that you attract those clients. Because once you get, once you have that brand story in place and you attract your ideal clients, your target audience, they are going to tell their audience about you. And that's where the broadening comes out. You just get, you make raving fans out of your target audience and let them do all the broad, broad marketing for you. And I think that's the key. Okay. Now, Andrea was trying to answer this question earlier. So now the question is, who should we ask for help when we're trying to um, to improve our brand story? So since you are so eager to answer this, I'm going to let you go first again, because I know what you're going to say. And so we're just going to let you start and then we're going to let the other two continue on this. I'm going to serve up some fellow mink life people, right? Okay, here we go. So, you know, it... I love what Bonnie said about your story is always evolving, right? And I think I love, it, it made me, it was so vivid for me because I was like, yep, it's changed a lot in the last three years. Like everyone here probably has gigantically changed what they do or how they deliver it. And we were all looking for each other to either help or, uh, you know, how do I connect with more people? How do I broaden this reach like Peggy's doing. And so falling into communities and or tribes that help you do this is really the key. I mean, let's face it. Maybe we don't want to face it in Western cultures anymore. We need each other. <laughs> we need people. We need each other on so many levels, physically, emotionally, spiritually, to feel connected to something. Like even if we have a why, if we don't have a way to share it with somebody or make it manifest to others, I think it's difficult for us to feel like we're living in that why or living our purpose or our passion. So of course, it's good to ask for help first off. Like, who do you know who? I mean, we, that's very common, but sometimes just entrepreneurs, we get into our little silos and we're like, I don't know anybody. Does anybody know someone who can 
But that's the first step because maybe, you know, just putting it out there that you are looking for somebody to X, uh, you know, like I'm all excited about going back and looking at my about page because of what Bob has said today. And if I have a problem, I, I absolutely know that I can like, Hey Monica, that guy, Bob, I was on the show with, how do I find him? You know, that's how connecting and tribe grows and things build and you do that sort of thing. I mean, both of you are sitting here <laughs> as solutions to problems that I have all the time. I like content creation. <sighs> I just want to shoot myself, right? Like, And I'm like, so I saw what you guys did and I was like, mm -hmm. I was a plant on this show today. <laughs> <laughs> Because it is sort of all, it's not sort of, it is my continual struggle to get that out there or to create the content that drives the thing. And I know for a fact where to find you guys. I just never put the question in the community. So this is like a very teachable moment for everyone who's listening. Like the Mingle community is absolutely where I, now I'm going to go where we all hang out and be like, Hey, remember me from the show. So that is the first step is to say how, like, how do I do it and who can help? And then of course, asking people who may have a clue. So I just got told without even asking, but there you go. <laughs> You, that's that is uh, the best thing. You surround yourself with people that can answer before you ask. Bonnie, <laughs> same question. Who do you ask for help to improve your brand story? Uh, it's it's a great question. And, and as um, you know, individual business owners, we can't do it alone. So it really is important to to build your community. Uh, years ago, I heard someone talk about you need to build your own C-suite, right? You need mentors and coaches and, and all those people that they look at you and your business from outside your bubble because you can't see things yourself, you know. So myself, I'm in uh, one, two, three, four different mastermind groups. So they're small groups. They're all different people. One group is very similar. We're all writers of some ilk, um, but we've got very different businesses and different brand stories. So we can feed off each other. And then in other groups, it's um, it's that perspective of do people really know what I do? Because that we think people know what we do, right? But often it's too jumbled, right? I have friends that say, so what are you doing these days, Bonnie? It's, okay, that's a good question. I'm obviously not clear. So yeah, you just ask people, really have trust in people and, and ask them. Very cool. I love that. Bob, who, who should we ask for help? <laughs> we need to before before the camera went live, Bob, I have worked with Bob and and so I, I you should ask Bob, but go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I don't like to, to blame my own trumpet or whatever you want to whatever the phrase is. Um, but you do want to work with 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 writers, with people that can can get your brand story down um, either on your website or wherever it might be and, and that leads me into thinking about where else your brand story or we can even remove the word brand exists it exists in your marketing every single piece of it whether it be email marketing whether it be your social media marketing it's there and you have to make sure that every piece of marketing you put out is in line with your brand story um, and a savvy copywriter or a savvy writer also knows how to use story to create, for example, an email that tells a story, because storytelling sells, right? <laughs> um, people engage with stories. So using a story in an email to boost that conversion, boost the sales, boost the open rates, boost all of that, is another way to boost your brand because you boost, I'm using the word boost a lot, but you, you, you increase, um, you know, the, the big word for me this second half of the year of 2022 is visibility. Monica knows it already. Um, but it, it, it increases the amount of people that are engaging with your content, people that understand what you offer. Talking about what you offer, you just mentioned there, Bonnie, as well. I literally yesterday, for the first time in my business, put out a packages. Um, you know, th these are package deals. This is, this is what you can get with me. And it's because I identified that although I tell my story in everything that I do, people sometimes still don't know what I do. My mom, 
doesn't know what a copywriter is. Okay, let's put it that way. She has no idea what a copywriter is. And I thought, how could she understand what a copywriter is? If I tell her, I sell you 20 email package for this much money. Oh, you write emails. Yeah, I've, I, I've already said that to you. <laughs> but, but now you understand it as a package. It's finding different ways um, to, to, to communicate what you offer and how you can help. And that's what writers help you do, whether it be a content writer or a copywriter. Um, because I'm not that fantastic at content creation, just FYI. It's why I, I've never really used social media and that sort of stuff. Um, but the, the selling side of it, that's where I excel. Um, so I've forgotten the point I was going to make, but I hope I said enough. <laughs> no, I, I think you made a lot of really good points. And you brought up something that um, I think is really important to share. And that is, yes, we do have a power team with us, Monica. <laughs> um, uh, and that is the fact that there needs to be consistency. Like um, you need to know what your story is and you need to tell it from your profile picture all the way through your handshake at the end of the transaction, you know, that the same story needs to be told all the way through. And I think that um, I this whole show has been about understanding what your brand is and Andrea gave me a gift because I'm stealing something that she has said many times before. And thank you for giving me this gift. You need mirrors and maps. You need someone that you can look at and they say, you got spinach between your teeth. You need to clean that up. And you need some people that are uh, gone ahead of you and you can follow in their footsteps and they can be your maps. So you need both of those. Um, you need to ask both of those people. And um, and we need to ask, we need to ask. And that is sometimes the hardest thing, but recognize that nobody gets success by themselves. We're successful because we are humans and we work with other humans. Our diversity and our differences are what makes us strong because we all come together and we help each other. So I think the key is that we ask and that we find those missing, you know, we, those things that are lacking, who can who can fill that in? Who can help me in this area? Because I'm really good at this, but not so good at writing emails, Bob. <laughs> so, you know, getting out there and actually doing that. And so I think that's that's this has been so fun. I have enjoyed this so much. It is time for announcement. It's not. Oh, we're missing one. It is time for announcements. I was not wrong. Our producer <laughs> was wrong. It is time for announcements. Yay. And it's not that slide yet. Is that announcements? It is announcements. Oh, it is announcements. All right. We're going to start with Bob. Bob, what announcement do you have for us today? What do you mean by announcement? What, <laughs> what I mean by announcement is what would you like people to do? What's going on in your your business, what would you like um, people go um, learn more about what you do, sign up and have you like do really cool evaluations of their their newsletters and emails and tell them how to do it right so that they cannot follow up with you? No, no, so they can follow up with you. <laughs> okay, well, uh, there's, there's quite a bit I can talk about here, so I hope we've got a good amount of, I'm joking. Um, so the, uh, the main thing is that we've just talked about asking, speaking to people um, who who can help you. Um, if you feel like I'm a person that can do that, if you're if you're currently struggling to convert customers through email, or you're currently struggling to convert website visitors because your about page is all about you um, instead of it being about the customer, um, then let's talk let's chat um you can follow that link at the bottom of the screen now that'll show you the sort of services that i offer um what's not on there is the service that i gave to peggy which is the copy audits which is the most affordable way um to to use a copywriter um and you can learn more about that about that uh, sorry learn more about that by by contacting me um and i've just actually recently launched something else as well um which is called the copy bean academy um, which starting from September is going to have monthly courses, monthly support and group coaching. Um, so if you want to learn more about how you can do what I do, that's the place to be there too. Awesome. Awesome. Bonnie, what announcements do you have, <laughs> have for us? 
Sorry, I was on mute there for a minute. Uh, I guess, you know, similar to Bob, uh, I really welcome conversations, um, people, marketing is a big word, uh, content marketing uh, is more specialized, but there's still lots of elements to it. Um, we throw the term content around, but some people don't always know what that means in their business. Uh, so I help people whether it's writing or audio or video, I give them feedback on what it is they're creating, but also how to be able to put it out there consistently, whether you've got a blog or you're doing a social media or emails, like how do you, how do you do that so you can build your credibility and elevate your brand story? Um, you know, that's what it's all about. So I, I welcome people to come to uh, my website, set up a call. We can have a, a one hour, hour call. We'll look at what exactly it is that you're doing. Uh, and maybe there's a way that we can work together and I can help you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I love that. And as a content creator myself, it is sometimes super frustrating. So this is so nice to know that you are out there. I'm so excited. Peggy? Peggy? Well, I'll talk. Uh, something could have happened. <laughs> and since, you know, as we told you guys, if you're on the screen, you better be talking. So I'm going to fill some tight space. So hi, everybody. Uh, right now I'm gearing up for a um, eight-week challenge, not an eight-week challenge, an eight-week program that I have. It's called the Detoxification and Rejuvenation Reset. And it's all about... Uh, you know, really helping you set up all of your internal systems, yourself, your body, your spirit to thrive. And we do it over eight weeks. And I am going to be having conversation about that in my Facebook group. I just sent it over to Monica, if she could put it on the, um, the screen. And then if you're just like, that sounds cool and you want to chit chat, I would love for you to book a Thrive call with me. Uh, it is super simple. And I think Monica will put that in the chat too. Uh, so my next outing of the uh, Detoxification Rejuvenation Reset will be September 15th. And so I am filling spots for that as we speak. And I would love to help you on that journey to realizing your very, very best self in terms of mind, body, and spirit. Uh, because if it's not you, then who? And it's really important for you to really be all into you. So it's a lot of use. It was a lot of boost before. But that's sort of what we do here in the Thrive Strategy land of well-being and worth. So I'd love to have you. Thank you. This is this is really fun for me to be on the show because I've worked with everybody except for for Bonnie. So, well, next. yeah, Bonnie's next, obviously. Um, but anyway, this is very exciting. So me, um, I'm the headshot strategist. I teach you how to use your headshot as one of the biggest parts of your marketing strategy, because after all, your headshot is almost always your first impression, because that's where people are seeing you first. So if you want to talk about it, you want to see if there is something I can do to help you, then um, schedule a free consultation with me and we'll talk about it. I'll let you know what I do. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, maybe I can also help uh, with actually taking your headshots. But if you're anywhere else in the world, I can talk you through and teach you how to get effective headshots with any photographer. All right, now it's time for the community. Yep. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know what I did. I'm help I'm helping. I'm helping. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to uh, talk about the Mink Life community. And it is so exciting. We have all um, the Mink Life things going on. We have the um, Minkubator, the workplace, all of these places. <laughs> community. <laughs> My producer's yelling at me. Private <laughs> group app where we can watch 
these videos and many, many more and get tons of knowledge, um, direct messaging members, get help. We share our experiences and we work together and help each other. It is an amazing community. It's where I've met all of these amazing people. And we have a incubator that happens six days a week. You can come on and you can work independently. You can work with a schedule that's there that helps you stay on track, or you can do what you need to do. And you can go hang out at the water cooler and just vent, ask people questions. Um, there has been tons of times when I have written something and I've said, hey, does anybody have a minute? Can you read this? And um, my team, my coworkers make me look smart and like I can write an intelligent conversation. So you guys are great. Um, we have uh, lots of collaboration. We have this live show. And if you want to be a guest on this show, then get a hold of us and, and see about becoming a guest. We have a podcast and we have a magazine. So we have lots of stuff going on. And of course, the, the <laughs> conferences. There we go. We have in two days, we have 24 panels, six workshops, 24 breakout rooms, and this happens globally. So visit nextglobalvirtualconference.com. Find out when your next conference is. And if you want to be a dynamic speaker, you can fill out an application there. And once again, guys, we love you. It's been so much fun. Tomorrow, Thursday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, um, same place, same time. You're gonna, we're gonna have a conversation about boosting your influence with Colleen. So make sure that you don't miss that. All right, guys, thanks.